Hello friends, in this session we are going to discuss about the concept of counters in digital electronics. So what are counters? Counters are basically the instruments which are used to uh, count the number of clock pulses applied at a particular, uh, you can say at a particular um, circuit, right in a particular circuit you can say. So uh, basically they are just used for counting, counting what? Counting the number of clock pulses, right. So now uh, they are just a combination of registers arranged in a particular manner which help in counting the number of clock pulses. We'll slowly dig into the details of counters. But for now, we'll just uh, say that they are used for counting the number of clock pulses and what are they? They are a combination of some registers. Registers we've already covered. So in case you have not seen the videos on registers, you can please go back to the playlist of registers and view that entire session. So in this video, we'll be particularly focusing on the concept of counters. So now next important point is if I have, let's say, three flip-flops, right? If I have, uh, let's say, three flip-flops, then what are the possible number of stages of a counter? So uh, I have put it in a generalized manner. Let's say if I have n flip-flops, then the possible number of stages will always be less than equals to 2 to the power n. Now, why, why is not equals to 2 to the power n? Because the maximum number of stages will be 2 to the power n, no doubt. But every counter may not use every stage, all the stages, right? So, uh, you'll shortly get to know about this. But all counters may not use all the stages. Therefore, we have written that number of stages will always be less than equal to 2 to the power n. If it is using all the stages, it will be equal to 2 to the power n. If it is using some less, it will be less than this. Now, let's take an example. Let's say I have a mod 8 counter. Mod 8 counter basically means it has 8 stages, right? So that then uh, if a question comes that find the number of flip-flops required to build this mod 8 counter, then you would say that the number of flip-flops is nothing but log 2 of number of stages. It's just I'm just taking log on both the sides in this case. Uh, considering that this is the maximum number of stages, right? So it is log 2 of number of stages which comes out to be log 2 of 2 to the power 3 which is 3 log 2 base 2 which is 3. So similarly like one of the students asked this question that how many flip-flops are required to build a mod 32 counter. Again you will do the same thing log 2 of 32 which is log 2 of 2 to the power 5 which is 5 log 2 base 2 which is 5 into 1 which is 5. So you will be needing 5 flip-flops. Now that's all was the case for the questions of this type. Now let's move on to the types of counters. So there are basically two types of counters. We have asynchronous and synchronous counters. Let's see some of the major differences between them. So uh, first of all, if I talk about asynchronous counter, it basically means that different flip-flops are applied with different clocks. So when you see the structure of a counter, it is basically some of the flip-flops connected to each other in a particular arrangement. When we saw about resistors, it was also a combination of some flip-flops arranged in a particular manner. So same is the case with counters. So over here in asynchronous, different flip-flops are applied with different clocks. Every flip-flop has some different clock. They are not aligned together or they are not uh, getting the clock pulse from a single clock whereas in synchronous you have all the flip-flops are applied the same clock so all the flip-flops are connected with the same clock this is slower this is faster since all the flip-flops are connected with the same clock what will happen is when you apply a clock pulse all the all the flip-flops will get triggered right so it is much faster than this whereas in this case the clock pulse will have to travel also let's say if i am saying that uh, one of the flip-flop is since we have written over here that all the flip-flops are not attached with the same clock so <clears throat> when you are uh, giving some output obviously some of the flip-flops will have to wait for the other ones to deliver their output in order to complete in order to have a complete output right so it is slower in that case okay next we have this has a fixed count sequence fixed count sequence in the sense that i have a fixed count sequence that 0 1 2 3 4 i cannot say that now i can count in the manner like 4 3 1 
zero, right? Four three one zero two. No. So in this, I always have a fixed count sequence. But over here, in case of synchronous counters, you can choose any possible count sequence. So it is according to your wish. The count sequence is according to your wish. Next over here. In asynchronous, decoding errors are present, but whereas in synchronous, there are no decoding errors present. Hey, so um, let's take one more aspect of counters now. Counters are also used as frequency dividers. So uh, counters are also used as frequency dividers. Let's see how they are used as frequency dividers. Uh, let's say I have. One frequency input. Let's say this is a combination of flip flops taken as acting as a counter. Now this is a mod five counter, suppose. So that means this has five stages. So this will be having some frequency input and it will be outputting some frequency output. So always, whenever you say there is frequency input, frequency output, if you want to know the relation between them, you would say frequency output equals to frequency input upon the number of stages. So, in a generalized manner, if I want to say the same thing, I would say for a mod five counter, that is a counter having five, uh, mod m counter, that is a counter having m stages, I would say f out equals to f in by m. So, similarly, if I take a combination of Two such uh, counters. I have mod m and mod n, and this is some intermediate frequency. But my final uh, output is this, and final input was this. Then I would say at this stage I would get f1 equals to f n by m, f n by m, and over here I'll get f out equals to f1 by n. So f1 by n. Now if I'll just combine these two equations, I would get f out equals to f n by m n. So uh, you also get numericals of this type, like I mentioned one. Uh, it is that a de a decade counter is applied with a frequency of 10 megahertz. Then the output frequency is what? Now a decade counter, as the name specifies, has 10 stages. So that means m over here is 10. Now the input frequency is 10 megahertz. So f out equals to f in by 10, which is equals to f out equals to 10 by 10, which is 1 megahertz. So that's all for these type of questions. In the next session, we'll be digging into the details of counters to another level. Uh, I'll be taking up the ripple counter to start with in the next video. So stay tuned and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you.